Okay, you know, sometimes when you're thinking about mathematical objects, you can count like, you know, from anywhere on the real line. You can still get one and a half and a third and pi and square root of two and all these other things. But sometimes in real world examples, in fact, the most fundamental examples at all in mathematics are counting things. One, two, three. You don't have one and a half of cars. You don't have three and a half children. You either have three children or four children. There is no half. So sometimes it's actually valuable to be able to look at just integer type valued functions. Functions that just take on the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and if you go into debt, unfortunately, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on. You know the pattern. So the question is, how can you graph these things in sort of a visual way? Well, one function that does the job is actually the greatest integer function. And I want to tell you about that first, and then I want to take a look at some graphs and see how do you actually graph the greatest integer function. So the greatest integer function has the basic shape, this. These square brackets mean the greatest integer of x. And so what that means is it's the biggest integer that is less than or equal to x. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at some examples. Suppose I say to you 3.8, and I want to take the bracket of that. That means I want to find the biggest integer that's less than this number. Well, notice that 2 is an integer that's less than this number, but it's not the biggest, because actually 3 is also less than this number and is an integer. And notice that 3 is also less than 3.8. What about 4? Well, 4 actually exceeds 3.8. So what that means is that the greatest integer that's less than or equal to this number is actually 3. So this actually would equal 3. Basically, what the greatest integer function does when you put in a positive number is it just lops off the decimal. So for example, if I say to you uh, 17.139, all you have to do is lop off the decimal, and you'll see 17 because that's the biggest integer that's less than or equal to this number. What about the integer, greatest integer function of 49? Well, it actually equals itself, because that is the biggest integer that is less than or equal to this number. So in fact, the greatest integer function of any integer is always the integer. Now, what about negative numbers? Well, actually, negative numbers are a little bit harder, because remember, when you think about negative numbers, things sort of work in reverse. If here's a number line, and here's 0, and here's 1, and here's 2, then here's minus 1, and here's minus 2. So let's think about the greatest integer function for negative numbers. It's a little bit weird, but it'll be fine as long as you remember that on a number line, as you move to the right, things get larger. If you remember that, then you're going to be set. Because you see, visually, what we're seeing is the following. Let me do one last positive example. If I say to you, let's say, 1.3. What's the greatest integer function of that? Well, if you think about where 1.3 is located, it's right here. And so I keep sliding to the left until I hit my first integer. That's the biggest integer less than this number. Well, if you remember that is the procedure, then you won't even get messed up at all with the negative ones. For example, let's take a look at this one, minus 1.4. So what's the greatest integer function of minus 1.4? See. A really good guess that's wrong would be to lop that off and just say minus 1. But see, that's just following a method that works for the positive numbers and not thinking about what's actually going on. Where is that point? Well, that point, minus 1.4, is, is right around here. Now, what I have to do is find the greatest integer that's less than this number. So I still slide back to the left until I hit my first integer. Look what happens. <laughs> and I hit negative 2. So in fact, this actually is negative 2. So it's a little peculiar when you're looking at the nearest integer, greatest function, because what's happening is when they're negative, we have to still go to the left. So for example, minus a half. What is the greatest integer function of minus a half? Well, I look where minus a half is, and again, I keep making it smaller until I hit my first integer, two, negative 1. So with positive numbers, it's actually really easy. All you have to do is just lop off the, the fraction. But with negative numbers, you have to sort of think to yourself visually of sliding to the left, which is what you're doing even in the positive case, until you hit your, your first integer. OK. Well, now, given that that's sort of how the function is defined, what does the graph of this look like? I mean, what is this going to be? So let's try to graph f of x equals the greatest integer function of x. 
And let's see if we can plot and see exactly what that would look like. So let's draw some axes here and see if we can get the show on the road. So here's Y. Here's a little X. Let me put some numbers in here. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2. Down here will be minus 1. Down here will be minus 2. Up here will be 1, 2, and you get the idea. OK, so let's see what we're graphing here. So remember, I'm going to plug in x values and ask what are the y values. And the y value will be graphing the greatest integer less than or equal to that x value. So let's start off right at the origin here. If I put in 0 here, what's the greatest integer function of 0? Well, it's 0. Because remember, if you put in any integer, it's just going to sort of report back what, what we have. So this is going to be a 0. And what about a half? Well, if you take a look at a half, I want to know what's the greatest integer of that. It's just going to be 0. And in fact, it's going to be 0 all the way until I get to 1. But once I plug in 1 into here, then what's the greatest integer of 1? Well, it's 1. So I'm going to have 0 for a while. And I'm going to have it all the way up to, but not including 1. Then at 1, it's going to take this quantum jump to 1. Because that is actually the value of the greatest integer function at 1. So I color in 1 here. Now what happens? Well, if I put in 1 and a half, what's the greatest integer function? All you got to do is slide back. If you slide back, you see it's still 1. So in fact, this is still going to be 1 for a while. Right? The greatest integer function less than or equal to any of these numbers is still 1. And it will remain 1 until you get to 2. And once you get to 2, the greatest integer function less than or equal to 2 is going to be 2. So in fact, this is going to continue until I get right to 2 but not including 2. And then at 2, what happens is I take a quantum jump up to 2. You see what's happening? I'm building these little steps. You see, it's sort of a step function. Sometimes people think of this as a step function. 2 and a half, the greatest integer function is still going to be 2. 2.9, the greatest integer function is still 2. So this is going to be constantly 2 for a while until I get to 3. And then at 3, the greatest integer function jumps to 3. And you get the idea. So in fact, we get this nice step looking thing. It looks like this. What about the negative sides? Well, the negative sides, remember, it's going to be a little bit weird, so we've got to be careful here. What about minus a half? Well, minus a half, we saw the greatest integer function is actually negative 1. So I've got to drop down to negative 1. And if you think about it, all these values are going to be negative 1, all the way out to negative 1. But then what happens at like negative 1 and a half? Well, then if I slide over to the, to the greatest integer less than that number, it's negative 2. So now I'm dropping down to negative 2. So what we see is that step pattern continues exactly as we saw it before. And what you see is this step pattern. This is something that's called a step function, and this is the graph of the greatest integer function. And you can see it has these jumps. It's not like any graph we've seen so far, like a parabola is very nice and smooth and beautiful. A line is awfully straight and perfect. But this sort of is constant for a while and then jumps. And then is constant for a while and then jumps. And then is constant for a while and jumps. It has a lot of these little jumps in here. And it's a very funny kind of looking function. But it's exactly the function that we want. Because if I put in 2 and a half, what's the greatest integer function of, less of 2 and a half? You just go up to here and you see it's 2 which is the correct answer. OK, up next what I'll do is actually graph an even more elaborate function using the greatest integer function to show you how to actually perform sort of the, the algebra and also look at the graphs of these really exotic kind of objects where you're taking this, the integer part, and not looking at anything else. I'll see you there.